In this video, I will explain the superconducting qubits. Superconducting qubits are a specific type of qubit that are at the forefront of quantum computing research. They rely on principles of quantum interference, superposition, and entanglement to perform multiple computations simultaneously, leading to massive speedups compared to classical computing. Quantum computers have the potential for use in a variety of fields, including machine learning, drug discovery, optimization, and cryptography. For example, they could simulate the behavior of molecules in ways that classical computers simply cannot handle, leading to the discovery of new drugs. It's worth noting that while superconducting qubits are a promising type of qubit, they are not the only type being explored. Other types, such as ion traps, topological qubits, and photonic qubits, harness the power of the probabilistic quantum world in different ways. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses, and researchers are actively exploring the potential of each type. Superconductivity is a phenomenon where, below a critical temperature, there is no loss of energy for conducting electric current. This is because electrons form so-called Cooper pairs and behave differently. Certain superconducting materials, such as aluminum, niobium, molybdenum, tungsten, and copper may be to build qubits due to their unique properties. These materials have critical temperatures that are suitable for quantum computing applications. Having said that, superconducting qubits are a specific type of qubit that rely on Josephson tunnel junctions. They are made of two superconducting materials separated by a thin insulating layer which allows for the tunneling of Cooper pairs between the two superconductors. By applying an external magnetic field to the junction, the energy levels of the Cooper pairs can be manipulated, creating a nonlinearity in the quantum circuit. This nonlinearity is critical for allowing the qubit to perform quantum computations. Additionally, the energy levels of superconducting qubits are unharmonic, meaning that the spacing between the energy levels is not equal. This unharmonicity is a desirable property for two-level quantum systems used as qubits, as it allows for better control over the behavior of the device and reduces the potential for errors in quantum computations. Superconducting qubits can be broadly classified into two types, charge qubits and flux qubits. Charge qubits rely on the number of excess Cooper pairs on a superconducting island to represent the quantum state. By controlling the flow of electrons to and from the island, the charge state of the qubit can be manipulated, allowing for quantum computations to be performed. On the other hand, flux qubits rely on the magnetic flux threading through a superconducting loop to represent the quantum state. By controlling the magnetic field through the loop, the flux state of the qubit can be manipulated, allowing for quantum computations to be performed. Both charge and flux qubits have their own advantages and disadvantages. Charge qubits are more sensitive to environmental noise and have a shorter coherence time, but they are easier to control and have simpler readout. Flux qubits, on the other hand, are less sensitive to environmental noise and have a longer coherence time, but they are more difficult to control and have more complicated readout. The fabrication of these devices is accomplished by lithography techniques. A Josephson junction consists of two superconducting electrodes separated by a thin insulating barrier, which is usually made of an oxide or nitride material. The insulating barrier is typically only a few nanometers thick, much thinner than the coherence length of the superconductor. This layer is usually deposited onto the surface of one of the superconducting electrodes using techniques such as atomic layer deposition or sputtering. The barrier is usually only a few atomic layers thick and is designed to be very thin to enable the tunneling of Cooper pairs of electrons between the two superconductors. The two superconducting electrodes are usually made of a low-temperature superconductor, such as aluminum or niobium, and are patterned onto a substrate, such as silicon, sapphire, or magnesium oxide. Finally, the entire device is mounted in a cryogenic system, called as dilution refrigerator which cools the qubit to its operating temperature of a few hundred millikelvin. The qubit is then controlled and read out using microwave pulses that are sent through the dielectric resonator. Superconducting qubits are a promising technology for building scalable quantum computers. They have a long coherence time and can maintain their quantum states for relatively long periods. While there are still challenges to overcome, such as reducing noise and improving scalability, 
superconducting qubits are a leading candidate for building practical quantum computers that can solve problems beyond the capabilities of classical computers.